Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video and I do think today's video might be a game changer. I do use that word quite a bit, but this is actually kind of huge if we could actually trade Sanctified Relics, right? This whole premise of the league has been that Sanctified Relics cannot be tradable. We have to keep running Sanctum in order to get the Sanctified Relic. While a lot of people like that whole shenanigan about having account-bound items, some people don't really enjoy doing the Sanctum, and some people really just want a good Sanctified Relic and would rather just pay for it. Now, you can't really trade it as in the sense that I have the Sanctified Relic right now. I can't just go and trade it to someone because it's account-bound. But there is kind of a way around it. It is not as elegant as you may think that, oh, you can just put it in the trade window. But some backstory about why I actually looked into this was because someone in my chat actually mentioned it. And it is a very, very cool tech that I'm actually surprised that no one has really thought of or hasn't been more popularized. But the fact of the matter remains is at this point, we're three weeks into the league. I've done over, I don't even know, hundreds of sanctums. I think I've gotten hundreds of sanctified relics and I have not been able to get my attribute stacking relic. In fact, the first sanctified relic I found was actually the best one for my build, which is this. It's kind of funny, but... It's just the way the cookie crumbles because there are so many mods for Sanctified Relics. So getting the one you want guaranteed is kind of a stretch. Now the way I found out about this method is someone in my chat mentioned it and I also looked at the boss carry section on TFT Discord. And right here you see want to sell softcore your Sanctum like Kia Kill will buy original scripture challenge relic for 5 divides if it drops. So this got me thinking can you actually pick up the Sanctified Relic if the original person who owns the Sanctum leaves the instance and I talked to the person and the answer is yes. You can actually pick up the Sanctified Relic, you can also pick up the Challenge Relic for the no hit run if it drops and you just have to agree on a price beforehand and have the person leave the instance and then you can go pick up the Sanctified Relic. Now as I said before, Sanctum is an amazing leak and a lot of people do not want to engage with the leak mechanic and that is perfectly fine. But they still want the power spike from the Sanctified Relic. The Sanctified Relic is pretty build enabling. It is absolutely wild for attribute stacking builds. And it's just a really, really huge power spike. Now, in Trade League, I do believe that Path of Exile has always been a game about choice in endgame. And that's what separates it from a lot of other games. In the sense that you can do what you want in order to get to your end goal. You can acquire gear... By killing monsters, you can acquire gear by crafting, you can do it by flipping items, you can do it by scamming people, you can do it by five ways. I was just kidding about the previous one. But there's so many ways to acquire gear, and that all revolves around how you get currency in the game. But in this sense, with the Sanctified Relic, it's probably one of the first leagues that GGG has introduced where an item is account bound and currency cannot be used to acquire it. I guess you can say that. I mean, Heist Trinkets is kind of similar, but Heist Trinkets doesn't actually give your character power outside of Sanctum. So this is a first for GGG, and you can see here that Sanctum has been doing pretty well. The numbers are around the same as Calandra, but we have to remember that Sanctum started out with a much lower peak. So the retention has been super good in Sanctum League, but there are a lot of people who dislike the League mechanic, but want the Sanctified Relic. Now, how do you actually trade the Sanctified Relic? So Sanctified Relics drop from the bosses, including mini-bosses, guards, and they can also be bought off the merchant as long as you're, like, I think doing a Sanctum at 75+. plus. However, the Sanctified Relic is a guaranteed drop off the final, final boss. So for people who don't know, after you kill the final boss, you also can fight a uh, Herald of the Scourge or whatever. It's like the second form of the boss. And in that second form, if your Sanctum is eye level 83+, plus. It is a guaranteed drop off the final final boss and the boss will also guarantee drop a unique relic. For, for Some of the unique relics are the original scripture and this thing drops the original sin ring. Supposedly this thing is pretty uncommon but I have three of them. So I have three chances at the no hit run. And then you have these ones here that the Herald of Scourge drops an additional invocation. And then you have these ones that convert your coins to unique items, convert coins to experience. And there's also one that converts your coins to relics. And you can see here, this is like the Uber Sanctum. And this makes it so that it can drop the Balance of Terror, which is a new jewel with an extra mod. So just think of that jewel as Watcher's Eye for Curses. 
So this means that you can theoretically sell your sanctified relic from the final final boss by having someone else tag alongside you in the final boss room. So that means when you do the sanctum and you're at the final boss, for instance, you can have someone go in with you and then they'll just be tagging you alongside you. You can kill the boss and then you will see the sanctified relic drop. And if you leave the sanctum, they'll be able to pick it up. Now, it's not account bound until you have it in your inventory. So as long as the person can pick up the sanctified relic, they are the owner of the sanctified relic as long as you as the sanctum owner leaves the instance. So that means you can sell it. So you can also sell the unique relics that drop if you have no intention of doing a no hit run. I do know a lot of people do get these original scriptures and at the current moment, I think the price of the original sin ring is probably like one mirror or so. So there is a high value for that in the sense that there could be someone else who wants to actually run the no hit run instead of just letting it die in the stash. So you can also sell the unique relics that you get and this does create more of a profit opportunity for people running Sanctum. Now we could even take this one step further. Now I don't really know how exactly this will be implemented. I do think that other people will find out a lot better and someone actually told about Meet about this in the chat. You can drop the sanctified relics identified. So say here you have the cloak of Tom's Isley. So you could theoretically sell your sanctified relic to someone else who might have a different build, but you will keep the one that is exceptionally good, if that makes sense. So if you see something that you really want, you say, oh, if there's a strength stacking sanctified relic that drops, I'll be keeping it, but you can keep any other one then by this way, you could actually still be farming the Sanctified Relics for yourself for your specific build while also being able to sell the Sanctified Relic to someone else. So they'll probably still pay for the Sanctified Relic being unidentified. But in the end, you it will be identified because you killed a boss of this cloak and it will drop identified and you will be able to maybe keep the Sanctified Relic if it's one of the mods that you want. And it just comes down to agreement beforehand that does have to have some trust issues, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is, right? Any sort of trade like this. Now, there's also some more stuff that first Crest converts coins to relics. So if you can see here, this thing converts all of your coins to relics, or is it, wait, where is it? Yeah, this one. So you could theoretically get like five, six, or seven Sanctified Relics at the end if you kill the final boss. And then there's also ones like the Night Lamp, and there's another one that makes it so that the Herald of the Scourge drops two additional Sanctified Relics, so you're guaranteed three Sanctified Relics at the end of the run. So theoretically, you can sell a lot of Sanctified Relics, so if you put that on, and or you have one of these other unique Relics, you can have like five or six Sanctified Relics, then you could theoretically sell five to six Sanctified Relics at a time to someone, and still have a drop identified, and you can keep the one that you perhaps want. Now the main thing is... That if you want to sell this to a lot of clients or if you want to share your sanctified relics with other people who might be playing a different build than you are, then you will maybe need to do the last boss on like six or six player HP or five player HP. So you do need a build that has a lot of damage and you do need to use this cloak and this cloak doesn't really give you any sort of stats. Now, another thing you can do besides selling the sanctified relics, if you have a lot of friends, now I know a lot of people here, they, we don't really have many friends when playing PoE. PoE is kind of a solo game so if you do have friends and say they play a different build than you are and you're like oh i want to help them out i have a sanctum done and if i drop a sanctified relic that i can drop identified and if they are playing a different build and it's good for them then they can pick it up right i can just leave the instance and if it's good for me then i can pick it up so there's so many different ways of utilizing this and i do think that this could be the next step in sharing sanctified relics and trading sanctified relics and selling them and you could set up a Sanctum that drops a lot of Sanctified Relics with the help of these unique Relics. Now, overall, who are the winners and losers in this? I do think the winners for this are definitely people who don't want to interact with Sanctum, yet they still want a good Sanctified Relic. I think the winners in this are also people who have their Sanctified Relics. They still enjoy doing Sanctum, but they want to have some additional profit from Sanctum. So if you are already have your Sanctified Relic, you want to sell a Sanctified Relic, you don't want to do the no-hit run, you can greatly increase your profit by selling these things. So you can say, oh, the original scripture, if it drops, you can pay like 5, 10, 20 divines. If the person who is buying the so-called your Sanctum can do it at like a 50% success rate, then they probably would be willing to pay 20, 30, 40, 50 divines. And it wouldn't even be that unreasonable. 
So you can theoretically greatly increase your profit from running Sanctums if you do sell your final boss room of Sanctified Relics. Also, I do think if this catches on and we have a section, so right now I'm pretty much thinking that you would probably post like you want to sell your Sanctum or you want to buy someone's Sanctum. So essentially what happens is this is kind of like a want to buy boss carry, except the boss carry is paying you and they're keeping all your loot. And that's pretty much what is going on. So if will be interesting to see what people actually value an unidentified sanctified relic at. I do think an unidentified sanctified relic, I would probably pay like one divine for it. So if you have like 200 divines, you find 200 people who are selling their final room in sanctum. You could have 200 chances at getting the sanctified relic of your dreams. So this pretty much allows you to do a lot of sanctums, or bypass doing a lot of sanctums, yet still have a lot of chances at getting a good sanctified relic. And this also opens up different farming strategies for people who want a sanctified relic instead of Alk and Go. I think one of the biggest problems currently is that Alk and Go is so prevalent, not only because the Atlas is so good currently for Alk and Go and the altars, but also because Sanctum just does not function when you invest into a juice map because you get so few, what's it called, rooms per hour. Like I said, I do wonder what people will do if they unidentified Sanctified Relic. And theoretically, this idea might just never catch on, but I do think that it is a good thing for the community to be able to sell their Sanctified Relic, unidentified or identify with the Cloak of Tarm Insley. And I think that even though this kind of goes against GGG's vision, I think that people will enjoy bypassing the Sanctum grind if they really don't like the Sanctum and just being able to pay extra money and access a chance at getting a good Sanctified Relic. And it's also great for people who are doing the Sanctum and already have their Sanctified Relic that they want. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Divides, and Sanctified Relics than me. And let me know down in the comments if you will be willing to sell your Sanctified Relic to me or someone else. And see you next time. Bye! Stay